Hey guys, in today's video, we are talking about TubeBuddy versus vidIQ and which tool is right for you. Now, in this specific video, what I'm gonna be talking about and focusing on is how to generate income on YouTube and how these tools can factor into the equation for you as you're trying to generate income. Now, if you're looking at this, like on the thumbnail, I think I talked about like, have made $8,000 passively online via YouTube, and you're looking at the date and the estimated revenue, it's clear that I'm not generating that income from YouTube AdSense. So what I'm gonna do in this video is be very transparent. I'm gonna open up the curtain a little bit, let you see exactly how I'm generating revenue, and show you strategies and tactics that you can employ for yourself if you're interested in making passive revenue online. So this right here is a spreadsheet that I keep track of for myself on how I'm generating income for my business. When I say my business, it's about 99% YouTube revenue. And you'll see that in January of 2019, I had $817.65 total. Definitely not enough to leave your job, but I was able to more than 10X that number when you look at August 2020, where I made over $8,300 from YouTube. Now, one of the important trends here to look at is YouTube AdSense. I went from $413.85 to $1779. If you wanna go back to the channel here, I can show you this. Um, if we're looking at September, 1779.45. Again, 1779.45. But then if you go over to the right here, we can start looking at affiliate income and you can see how this is playing a much larger role in the income generation for my channel. So what I wanna to do to kind of simplify this a little bit, and I'm gonna bring this back to TubeBuddy and vidIQ in a little bit, but I wanna kind of share with you the income that I was making in January 2019 and where that was coming from, and then how I was able to accelerate it using tools like TubeBuddy and vidIQ. Now, this tool right here, what this is called is Impact Radius. It's an affiliate marketplace. They're free to sign up. And then what you can do is you can find brands that you wanna promote via your YouTube channel. And if somebody uses the link in your description, it kind of tags that person, and then you make an affiliate income when they end up purchasing the product. So you'll see that this is called MacPaw, but that's actually the parent company for a tool, a software called Clean My Mac X here. And what you can see based on my relationship with them is I get 40% of any sale that uh, occurs through my affiliate link. So if we go back looking again, this is January of 2019, I was able to send them 127 clicks and then there was nine actions, meaning nine sales. So they generated $383.75 and I was able to keep $153.50 of that. So when you're looking at this, that's where that number is coming from. So in that specific month of January, 2019, it was very important to me because I remember it was about a week after New Year's, I'm driving to work. I live in Buffalo, New York, so it's probably gray, cloudy, cold, maybe snowy. And I was just like, I don't wanna do this anymore. I know some people, they get real obsessed about revenue and income because they wanna live a lavish lifestyle. That is not me. I legit still right now, as I'm making this video, drive a 2007 Chevy Malibu that has rust around the wheels. I don't care about that stuff. What I really care about is free freedom, flexibility, and control. And those were all things that I didn't feel like I had any control of when I was working a day job in nine to five. So at that time, I luckily enough was reading a book called Principles by Ray Dalio, really long book. But one of the best principles I got out of it was pain plus reflection equals progress. I knew I had a lot of pain, a lot of angst at that specific time, but I wasn't spending a lot of time thinking about and reflecting about how I might be able to resolve that pain. And I realized I keep watching these videos and hearing about generating affiliate income online and how you can live this different life and blah, 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 blah. I hate all those videos where like, I made a million dollars by the time I turned 23. That's not what my channel, that's not what my content's about. But at the same time, I knew it was possible because I was making some affiliate income. So I decided to kind of start making more of a concentrated effort on affiliate income. And what you'll see is if we go down to August of 2020, I was able to generate over $8,300 that specific month from YouTube income. 1790 of it came from YouTube AdSense, but over 6,000 of it came from affiliates. So what I wanna do at this specific juncture of this video is break down this Clean My Mac, this Mac Paw affiliate that I have and how you can actually replicate what I'm doing. I know I'm kinda of opening up the curtain here a little bit and I'm probably gonna lose some income on this specific affiliate, but I'm gonna show you how tools like TubeBuddy and vidIQ can help you do that. So if you're not familiar, um, TubeBuddy and vidIQ both actually have their own affiliate program. So you can earn up to 50% recurring revenue on TubeBuddy and on vidIQ you can earn up to 25%, well like half of that. So the reason I mention this is what I have found with affiliates is that typically the affiliate that has the worst offer is usually the better company product or service. And I believe that holds true in this comparison of TubeBuddy versus vidIQ. I think that vidIQ has a worse affiliate offer because they actually have more features 
features and functionality available on their tool. And I'm gonna explain the one feature that really swung me towards vidIQ and why I like that tool better than TubeBuddy. So if you were to search this specific product, right, Clean My Mac X review on YouTube, this might look different now just because I'm giving away all this information for free. Uh, but in this specific uh, time, I am uh, ranked number one. And you can see I've had 12,000 views in eight months. And I've also done some previous reviews on this. You can see this one was from two years ago with 16,000 views. So I was actually, uh, I did an initial review of this product and then I did a follow up one in 2020. So what happens is if somebody might click this, right and then they see a link in the description here they click the link and then when they go through they've been tagged with my affiliate and if they buy that i get 40 percent of the purchase price so it's you know pretty simple makes a lot of sense but the one thing the one metric of why i prefer vidiq over TubeBuddy is what i'm going to show you right now now i want to go back to the most recent one because this is the most important one because it's ranking up top now if you click on this video and you were to look at one specific metric, what I am looking for is the overview here is how many views per hour that this video has. And just kind of bumped it over. It's got 2.6 views per hour. Now, if we were to look at the analytics, what you would expect to see is probably somewhere around 40 to 60 views per day based on that metric. And sure enough, when you take a look and we look at this, maybe uh, why don't we look at um, October, this specific month, what you're gonna see here is 58, 36, 63, 21, 69, and it's pretty darn accurate, right? That specific metric was telling us that about 2.4 views per hour, so we think 50 to 60 views per day. But then what we look at on the right-hand side here is where these views are coming from. So what you can see is YouTube search accounts for 48% of those views and external counts for 39.8%. Uh, if you're talking about external, what it is is usually, at least in my case, people might be searching this on Google and then I'm showing up in the video carousel. They've actually been experimenting with this on Google search results. It used to be a carousel that ran left to right. Now it's kind of this up and down one, but you can see that on the first video here. So when people, when you're taking a look at my uh, analytics here, that 39.8% of it uh, is coming from Google. And, and this is coming from people that are searching on YouTube. So all of my views and income are coming from these videos ranking on YouTube and Google, people watching them, finding it helpful, and then clicking through and using my affiliate link. So why don't we do a little case study of research of this specific video that you're watching. So what I did in this specific example is I looked up TubeBuddy and then you put in the word verse. Anytime that there's a word like verse, best, or reviews, those types of words are buyer keywords. So in your specific situation, you're trying to decide between uh, TubeBuddy and vidIQ. And of course, these suggested search results here are helpful because it's telling you that there's already search volume for that keyword. And what I'm looking for in this specific situation, and I have vidIQ installed via their Chrome plugin, which is very easy to set up, is I'm looking for videos that have a decent view count but low subscriber rate. And the first video that I found here is four months old. It's got 5,400 views, but only 1.34 thousand subscribers. So what I would do is I'd click on this video and I wanna go down and I wanna see what their views per hour are. So I'm gonna get rid of TubeBuddy here and I see 3.8 views per hour. So again, what you can do is you can just kind of multiply that. So I would have guessed that this guy is getting somewhere around 75 to maybe 100 views a day. And the fact that he has a low subscriber rate is important because what that's telling me is he's probably not getting this from subscribers seeing his content later on or anything like that. He's most likely, just in the case of my uh, YouTube video, is probably getting it from external and YouTube search for his viewers. So what I'm doing with that specific views per hour metric is I'm finding opportunities where there's low subscribers, but high views, and they're continuing to get views per hour like that. So really what I know at this point is that there's an opportunity here to be in front of people that are choosing between TubeBuddy and vidIQ. So then what I need to do to outrank this video is to make a higher quality video that just gives so much value that somebody watches it, they're just gonna watch the whole thing because they feel like they're getting so much value from it. So if we go back, I wanna show you a couple other metrics that I'm looking at is right now uh, vidIQ is taking this term and they're gonna give you a bunch of information and you can see the overall score is a 75 out of 100. And the way they're determining that is the volume, how much search volume there is for that keyword versus the competition. So the competition is very low, the search volume is decent. So that's where the 75 out of 100 comes from. And I love the fact that a small channel is sitting at the very top of the search results for that keyword. 
So this is a really good opportunity for me to make content. And what I have found is it doesn't really ramp up right away typically. Like if we go back here and we look at this um, lifetime, right? What we'll probably see is that this was getting you know, one, two, eight, you know, blah, 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 blah. And this was posted in February. But then as soon as like that spring, I was already getting pretty good views. And at that point making income from this video. So what I expect from making this two buddy verse vid IQ video uh, for a review video is I'll probably see the same thing. It's going to start out a little slow and then the analytics will start to pick up. And when those views start to pick up, what you'll find is that more people will be using my affiliate link in the description below. And then I'll start making recurring revenue from that affiliate relationship. So at this point, I thought it would be good to kind of highlight where the tool may fall short. So in your specific situation, if you really take the keyword data very literally, I think you're going to miss the boat on a lot of opportunities. So right here, what we're looking at is the keyword term blender reviews. Now, if you were to look on the right hand side, it's a 34 out of 100 score. And the reason for that is that the volume it's saying here is zero. Now I can tell you just by using my gut that there are people searching Blender reviews with an S. And you can see that I had the top uh, video here over 280,000 views in about the last year. It's probably been about a year and a half. And you'll notice that I don't have the S here. Now, if I was to drop this, and again, we have a 34 out of 100 score, and now I'm looking at the term Blender review, you can see that the actual uh, overall score jumps up to a 57 and the volume is much, much higher. So what I would recommend is don't really look just at that overall score immediately and you know say I should or shouldn't do a specific video because of that what you may want to do is scroll down and then look at top related opportunities because that's where you're gonna find oh best blenders at a 58 blender reviews at a 57 and now if I was to look at those specific terms and again look at this what this tool would probably tell you is it may kind of lean you away from going this route because look at all these channels, 1 million subscribers, 16 million subscribers, 204,000 subscribers, 1 million subscribers, but I'm still showing up in this space with only 12,000 subscribers. So one of the things that's interesting is I think people get very literal about the keywords that you're showing up for on your video. And I think sometimes that can be a mistake, even though that's how I've grown most of my channel, is that YouTube has changed over the years. Now, if you were to look at when vidIQ was launched, it was 2011 and TubeBuddy was 2014. Now, the reason that that's important is YouTube has changed a tremendous amount over the years. So from my experience, there's really two parts to this, right? Uh, a tool like vidIQ can help you do research and find opportunities, but then there's the way you structure the video and making sure you're doing best practices there to help your video rank. So clearly it's working because you're watching this video and you've stayed on to this point. But now what we have is the end card and you've seen these and I have seen so many channels miss the boat on these specific end cards and why they're so valuable to your YouTube growth. So I'm going to catch you in this next video right here and we're going to discuss and circle back everything that we've talked about and learn about why these end screens are so valuable for growth on YouTube. So I'll catch you in this next video and give you those insights as well.